Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, we are going to discuss how we in, um, in the Procona support team deploy uh, PostgreSQL instances to handle customer tickets. Um, I'm Agustin Gallego, I'm from Uruguay. I am doing it in English because my Portuguese is really bad, but if you have questions and you don't like to uh, do it in English, if you fala devagar, uh, you comprend. So, um, for your sake, for, so you can understand me better, I won't do it in Portuguese. I tried to do it once and it went terribly bad, but yeah, I can understand a little bit. So, what are we going to talk about? Um, why, what, and how? These are three uh, important points when you uh, are faced with a problem, right? So, I'm going to present the motivation behind the, using these tools, uh, the, what tools are they, and how we use them. And if you are familiar with Arthur, Arthur C. Clarke's Rendezvous with Rama, you are going to see the number three um, a lot in this presentation. So, why do we need to be efficient uh, when deploying? In our case, we have a um, varied um, customer, uh, customer base. With the, they, they all have their environments with their uh, particularities. And in the support team, we have SLAs or service level agreement times that we need to be, we, we are bound by, right? So whenever a ticket comes, there are, of course, levels in severity. But if, uh, for instance, there is an emergency and the customer is down, we have 15 minutes uh, to engage with them and reply and work with them, right? So the worst case scenario, we have 15 minutes to have an instance running where we can uh, test and better guide the customers, right? And then, uh, of course, time is money. And if you can do more work per hour, you can get more tickets out. You can uh, be more efficient with your time. and then. One of the most important ones actually is sanity. Like if, if you have to context switch uh, a lot within the day, uh, let's say um, you, you, you work on a ticket one hour, then you spend 30 minutes on the other, and then 15 and one hour, you have four different environments you have to uh, deploy. And doing it manually will, uh, it will get you to the, to the, to the nut house very fast, right? So, uh, what tools are we going to discuss? The first one is actually the most important one, I think, even though uh, it, as, as with everything, it has its pros and cons. If you take one of the tools uh, from this talk, is, I, I suggest is NADBver, it's more versatile and the more, uh, it, it can deploy the most complex environments with, with, the easy, with easiness. So NADBver is, deploy, uh, is um, developed by uh, our support colleague, uh, Nikolai Ihelenian, he's Russian, and he, he is um, developing this because we couldn't find any, any tool that, was, that had what we needed and that was uh, ready, readily available open source, right? And then the second one is um, a, a project I developed when, when I started working with, with Postgres, I come from the MySQL world. So in MySQL, we had the MySQL sandbox, which is uh, much more co uh, complex uh, than my tool. It can uh, deploy uh, replication environments and, and such. But what I wanted to do is just to avoid doing the uh, initialization of the data, the, the start manually with PGCTL, stop, manage my own instances. I didn't want to have that uh, rework done every time. I wanted to test um, basic uh, single instances. And this is just like, I would call it uh, an intelligent alias, right? It's not uh, much more, but it's, it's very easy to use and it's in bash. And then finally, Docker, it's just here for completeness. This is what we used at the beginning, and um, I don't think it's, it's relevant anymore, but it's just there in case you, you want to use it. So let's uh, begin discussing each tool, each tool's pros and cons. Any beaver can handle very complex environments with ease, as I said before. So these are some of the tools that are supported. And by complex environment, I, I typically mean replication or, or high availability environments, right? So 
We do have all of those uh, that are natively supported by the tool. Of course, the tool uh, uses uh, LXC, so you can install any other tools you want. But if you need any of these tools, it would be a great match uh, for, your, for your case. As it can use containers, the overhead is minimal. It can also use its own VM if you, if you don't have or you don't want to install LXE. Uh, it does have uh, support for Vagrant and Docker. The good thing about Vagrant uh, or its own VM is that it, it will create uh, a VM and then inside you can use LXE. So it's, it's like a redirection in case you don't want to install LXE. It will spin its own uh, virtual machine and install it inside. And then that it can easily run other even more complex environments uh, like uh, Kubernetes operators that we are um, now uh, having as a, as a GA product and Procona monitoring and management that I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you already went to the booth, but we have the monitor there that you can check uh, the different uh, graphs in PMM. It's a very nice tool, very cool. So uh, if you haven't yet, just go to the booth and, and ask us about it. And the last thing is that AnyDBver does not only support PostgreSQL, it does have support for MySQL and MongoDB. So if you have hybrid environments or if you also work with MySQL and MongoDB, this is a great fit for you uh, also. On the, on the contrary, the, the not so uh, good points about AnyDBver is that, of course, we need to have yet another layer of software that it, it's not the case with the PostgreSQL sandbox. If you have the binary, that's all you need. And then the time it takes to, to start these environments can be non-trivial, uh, let's say. Um, it can take, it's, it's common for it to take five, even 10 minutes for some uh, replication environments that we are going to see um, in, in, in a second. So uh, it does have its complexity behind it because it supports so many, it has, it is so functionality rich. So it's of, of obviously more complex, but nothing out of this world. In 20 minutes, you will uh, surely be uh, using it with success. Then PostgreSQL Sandbox, it's again, the, the, the script was just a, like a, an intelligent alias. So it's very simple. And you can even check the, 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 the code. It's a bash script. Uh, it must be um, not, not, not more than 300, 200 lines. And you can even implement your own functionality with ease, right? It's very easy to use also. And since it runs the, the binaries directly, it's very portable, right? I, I, I will show you uh, in the end, I was uh, able to successfully use it in my uh, Mac M1 chip. And then, uh, of course, it's very fast. This takes seconds, really. If you have the binary available, in five seconds, you can have um, a, a PostgreSQL instance running. On, on the contrary, uh, there is no native support for complex environments. Nothing stops you from deploying three uh, sandbox instances and then just manually setting up replication or uh, installing other tools. But this is, of course, uh, what we want to avoid, the, doing manual work. So if you need uh, replication, HA, or any other tools, I suggest you use any, any DBver. Uh, as it is running uh, in, in, the, in the host itself, there is not that uh, security layer that containers uh, allow us. And then uh, since, again, I, since I come from the MySQL world, so in MySQL we do have tarball distributions. And uh, since Postgres doesn't provide this, we need to compile. Some months ago, I ended up um, including a, a command that is a, a build command, so we can compile any version we want just by uh, setting the number, because what Postgres does really good is having the source code. Uh, the URL is always the same. You just change the number, so that's very easy. We just uh, curl to get the, the source code. We compile it, and it was really easy uh, to do, right? So. Uh, you don't even need to compile it yourself. Now PostgreSQL Sandbox does it for you. And then finally, um, Docker is everywhere, and you probably all have used it by now and, uh, and are familiar with it. So that's, I think, the, the, the best, uh, the, the, the most positive side about uh, still having Docker in the slides. And uh, Docker provides 
raceable uh, images that we can download and uh, use. And then the, the, the things that we have already discussed, an array of software. Uh, in case of Docker, what we tried to do in the past, I'm not sure if this still applies because I haven't used this in a while, but we tried to attach GDB to um, a process running inside a container to get uh, the symbols was a nightmare. And uh, we couldn't get, we used, uh, we also tried to use perf to get flame graphs, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with. It's so like Brendan Gregg uh, project that you can get a visual, visual aid on the code paths that um, the different threads or processes are taking. And it was a nightmare and we couldn't use it, but this may have changed now. Um, and then again, no uh, out of the box support for uh, complex environments. Back in the day, I, I, I used, um, I think it was Docker, Docker Swarm to do something similar, but yeah. I, again, any to be very easier, your safest bet here. Okay, so let's go to the fun uh, part to how to use this tool. We are, we are going to see three main, um, main categories here, how to install it, how to use it, and how to see which instances we have running. So any DBVR, again, this is going to be the main focus of the, of the talk and what I would like you uh, to take from it, right? Um, in, to, to run any DBVR, you will have to have LXC uh, or LXD and Ansible, right? So there is a, this is a hard requirement unless you want to use Vagrant and uh, virtual, VirtualBox to run the, the the virtual machine that will run inside any Um after, after you install LX, LXD or LXD, you have to initialize it and then just clone the repository and tell any DBVR that you want to use the LXD provider. After, I, I, I suggest that after you configure it, you do the any DBVR update so it can get the latest uh, versions and it, it it stores them in, in a text file for ease of, uh, for ease of use. So regularly run any DBVR um, update and git pull because Nikolai is always um, adding new functionality. Yes. This is used, so mainly it's Ansible. And then this is, he's going to migrate it uh, to Python, but it's, it's now using Bash. But I think he was already starting to do the migration. So in the future, because Python has better error handling and uh, in situations where something fails that you may not care about. Um, so yeah, he's already starting to work in that, but I don't think it, it's already in Python. Uh, and then any DBVR help will, will list you all of the commands available and you can run like any DBVR uh, can accept subcommands, right? Like list, deploy, destroy, etc. So to get uh, help from that command in particular, you just use any DBVR, the subcommands, and then help, right? And in this case, the deploy help will tell, will list you a lot, a lot. It's a very long list with all of the possible um, deployment scenarios that, that you can have, right? You can, of course, uh, pipe, grep, uh, PG, Postgres, PMM, whatever you are interested in. And, and further check there. And then, as you can see here, this is uh, the first uh, actual usage to deploy an instance with any DBVR. It is very, very, very simple. You just, uh, in this case, we're using the, the uh, PPG is the Percona uh, Postgres distribution. If you use PG only, it will use the upstream uh, uh, packages. So, um, you can use PG and the semicolon there and the version. If you, if you don't use the, the minor, it will use latest, but you can also use major.minor and it's supported, right? And as what you want to see here is that there were no failed, um, I don't know if I, in Ansible you call recipes or what, but no failed steps uh, here, right? You, you want to see everything uh, going fine in this section and nothing here. Of course, skipped is fine, uh, but we don't want to see any errors. And then to use it, uh, again, we are using LXE, 
So this is going to run within a container, right? So to get access to the container, we have the SSH command that by default, it will uh, try to log into node zero, which in this case was the only, the, the only node we have running, right? So any debugger SSH will get us into the container, and this is a fully functional uh, terminal, right? As you, you will get with Docker exec, IT container name bash, that's exactly the same. So in uh, init, we can use PSQL to get access to the database via this, uh, the, the client binary, and we can start using it like that. In this case, just I use select version, just a very dumb um, example, but it works to show the, the functionality. And then another very cool stuff that we can do, of course, is uh, port forwarding from any machine to any other. In our case, what we are interested in is from in our local uh, machine to be able to access that environment, right? So the steps for that is get the container IP address that we can do with the command IP. So any debugger IP node zero, this will get us the, the IP address uh, from our container. And in support, we have uh, testing servers that we all share, right? So uh, even though it's a um, very powerful machine, we uh, try to minimize the, 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 the instances that are kept running, right? So I'm going to show you in, in some seconds how to get rid of all these environment. But another thing is that if we want to access from our local machine, we typically need to use port forwarding with uh, SSH with a tunnel, right? And in this case, what we are doing here is using this IP address from the container and using it to, uh, let's say, bridge the 5432, the Postgres port, from the, the instance running um, remotely in our server to our local host, right? And in this case, uh, this is the, uh, the, the, the host name from the support testing server. And in this case, what I would get here is the possibility from my local terminal to access the Postgres instance in the same port, uh, in, the, in the same default port 5432. So, again, th since this is a shared environment, we want to be good neighbors, and it's very important uh, for us to, when we stop using the instances, to remove them, uh, remove all of the containers being used. So in this case, any debugger destroy will remove all of the containers, and it will do it every time we do deploy also. So before the deploy, it will do a destroy, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't support leaving the instance running um, indefinitely. You can have a deploy command that is complex enough that it can have not only Postgres, but Postgres, MySQL, Mongo, and they are all within their own, let's say, groups of containers isolated. But uh, yeah, it will always run destroy at the beginning. And then how to check the nodes that we have running, we can use the list command, and the, it, it will list all of the, in this case, this is another example. This is not what we are seeing now. This is not a single instance. This is a three node uh, environment, right? And to check the, the PostgreSQL logs, you would just log in into the container and check as you would any other uh, Postgres instance. Uh, by default, they are going to be in Varliv PG, um, PGSQL version number data log. Okay, so that was the, 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 the basic stuff. And, as, as I mentioned, AnyBeaver is capable of doing really interesting things, and we are going to see three examples here of advanced usage. As you surely know, the backslash here means that the command cont is continued, so this is actually a single, a one-liner command, right? But I'm presenting it here in this way, so it's easier to understand what we are seeing here is a three-node environment, in which we are going to use uh, e Patroni, and the, uh, the primary is going to be node zero, right? In this case, any debugger um, uses default or node zero interchangeably, right? So you can, in this case, this actually means node zero, as we are going to see uh, in, in some other examples. What we cannot do in any debugger is try to skip numbering. Right, so we cannot do something like this, uh, like zero, two, three, that wouldn't be allowed, or 
one, two, three. Like not starting from zero or skipping numbers in the middle is not allowed, right? Um, and then, yeah, after we start these three node environment, we can, uh, again, SSH, uh, using the SSH command to node zero, we can send the patronctl list command directly and we can see that it effectively is, um, has configured uh, a three node environment with replication uh, being um, controlled by Patron. So, as you can probably guess uh, here, this is um, very simple after, after you are used to it and very powerful, right? So, how much would it take you to spin three nodes, set replication, install Patroni, select the, 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 the primary, etc. So, uh, this, of course, we can, we can do uh, failovers and such uh, very easily here. I'm not showing it, but it can, it can be done. And then uh, another example is, uh, I, we, we are again using uh, replication here. We have two nodes. In this case, only you can see here node zero, node one. And then the, the tricky part here is that we are going back to node zero to install another, um, another layer of software, let's say. In this case, we are going back to install the PG pool um, uh, connection puller, right? So additionally, we installed in node zero, we installed PG backrest and wall G, and uh, we, are, we are then checking the, they were really uh, installed and correctly uh, working. In NDPVR SSH, we go inside the container, and then we can just use the commands as you would uh, in any instance. We can, of course, since we have pgpool configured, we can uh, connect through it with the, uh, in, in port 9999. And uh, in this case, I'm just showing um, basic stuff just to, to show you guys it really worked. Uh, but yeah, you can, do, you can configure um, pgpool as you like. Since we are using LXC containers, we can even um, stop the process and restart the process if we want to change any variable that uh, would need uh, a service restart, we can, we can do that also here, of course. And then the last, uh, let's say, advanced command, and let me check time just to make sure. Okay, perfect. And then the, the last um, advanced command I wanted to show is, in the beginning, I mentioned that uh, you can also use Kubernetes and PMM, and in this case, I'm going to show, to show you how to deploy PMM if you want to, to test it. And it's, again, uh, very simple. You would, the, the node zero will only have PMM, which in this case is going to be the PMM server. PMM is a, a, server, a client server architecture. And then we are going to install in node one, we are going to get the, our Postgres instance, and we are going to also install the PMM client and point uh, the, the client to node zero as the PMM server. Additionally, uh, in this case, we, we also have um, pgstat uh, monitor, which is a pgstat statement uh, fork with additional functionality. Uh, we have pgstat monitor that can give you more information on your queries. So if you wanted to test that, you could also do that in this way, pgstat uh, monitor and add the development uh, flag because it's, uh, it's not GA yet, right? So we can connect to the PSQL, uh, via the PSQL client, we can connect to the node one and check that it's been indeed used by select count from PGSAT monitor, right? So we do have a, a query count there and it's correctly being used. Now, the, very, the, the, the interesting part here is also to uh, get the IP address to do a tunnel. In this case, again, I was running it uh, remotely uh, to our testing server. So uh, I can access the PMM interface in my uh, local 443, right? So in this case, it would be uh, really uh, needed. Did I go up or down? Oh no, down. It would be really needed because PMM has a user interface, a web user interface that we, we, could, we couldn't access via SSH alone, right? So lastly, I want to, uh, to briefly talk about how a deploy command is structured, just so you have this information uh, available 
and can better parse the NDB uh, deploy help command. So, NDB ac accepts global variables, in which case you would use them before the deploy subcommand um, keyword. And then, as we discussed, it's going to be using uh, starting from node zero uh, and uh, using incrementally uh, uh, plus one uh, IDs, let's say, right? So zero, one, two, three, until you, you, you have uh, defined all the nodes you want. Then you would have the tool name that you will want to install in that node as the main process. In this case, it would be the database. So I, either the Postgres, MySQL, or Mongo. We can also um, use Kubernetes, in which case this uh, change, uh, changes a bit. But for now, let's, uh, let's just focus on um, non-Kubernetes deployments. And then we can have um, arguments, which are um, like, like, like we saw before. Like you can, you can point it to a primary. So in this case, it would be primary, semicolon, and the ID of the node that you want it to be primary uh, for. And then you can do this several times, of course, and even uh, use tool names like uh, we, we did uh, see with pgbag rest. You can also use uh, csvent, wallg, et cetera. Right? So uh, this is the, the basic uh, deploy command that you need to be familiar with. And at, in some cases, you may not see node zero being pointed. That means that um, it's going to be used by default node zero. So don't be confused if the, the help output doesn't, uh, doesn't start with the node zero uh, keyword. And then I just, I'm leaving links there so you can check uh, all the global variables that are available and other possible arguments that you can use. So this was NADBVR. Um, if you have uh, any questions on it, or if you want to see it uh, actually used, let me know, and we can we can get together and, and test it. Uh, I'm going to be at the booth, or just uh, send me an email, and we we will we can get together and check it uh, further. Right. So that was the main thing uh, from this talk: is that for you to recognize the differences between between the tools, when you should uh, use each one. And with a, with a focus in particular with NEDBVR. So from now on, if you want to shut down the, the brain, you can do it. Uh, we are going to discuss PostgreSQL Sandbox. It's very, uh, very straightforward to use and very simple. And then just Docker, I, I won't even, even bother mentioning. So PostgreSQL. There are, there are several ways um, to use PostgreSQL. But the way I, I suggest to use it is to uh, actually link it to a directory in your path so you can use it anywhere in the in, in your directory uh, tree right yes yeah no no it's just uh, I'm I'm using um, two files one was initially like the environment file that was copied but it's now it's just a single script you can you don't need to git clone, you can just uh, get the raw sh from there. It's just one, one file. Um, 300, I don't know. Not, not, not more than 300, it's very, very simple. And like 50% is uh, the, the function for the help output, so. <laughs> um, then I, after, after you link it, oh, to, oh. Wait, okay. After you link it, you will be able to use it in, in any, uh, again, in, in any di uh, directory you are. If it's, in, if it's in your path, which in my case, the, the, the home being sandbox is. So, uh, if you try to run it, it will, without any arguments, it will complain that you need to at least point it to uh, a binary that it, it, uh, it w needs to use and the sandbox directory uh, where all the data will be. Right, so if you use PG Sandbox Help, again you will see a, a, a lot of output which I am of course uh, trimming here, so so it could fit, but it will also print some examples on how you can use the tool. 
This is the way I suggest uh, to use it. It's just uh, initially would you, you would uh, create the, the, the sandbox directory in which you want to work, and you would point it to the, um, the directory where the, the binary you want is living, and then you'd use set env as set environment for it to create the directory, and it will create a file that it can then use without you having to input every time the binary and the sandbox uh, directory, right? So after you set the environment, you, you can change directory to the, the one you pointed uh, as sandbox directory and run create, right? So PG sandbox create will actually initialize the data directory for you and it will start the instance. So at this point, you will have the, all of the PostgreSQL processes running, um, if, you, if you do a PS uh, AUX grep, you will see them in your uh, machine. So um, let's check how this would work. In my case, I, uh, I have a PostgreSQL sandbox directory in which I try to be tidy and keep all of them there. You, you don't need to uh, use the same uh, directory for, for the sandboxes that you have, but I suggest you to do. Um, and then again, as we mentioned, we are going to set the environment, change directory, and run create. Okay, so at this point, the, um, the, the, the data there will be initialized, and we will have a server running. To connect to it, we can of course use PSQL, but PG Sandbox has a, a command that helps us with it, and it's PG Sandbox use. It will know the port is, it's running uh, in, because you can also specify with uh, dash p. You could add here dash p and select another port if you, if you are running multiple instances or if you already had something running, uh, another instance running in 5432, you can manually set the port, right? So after you do it once with the set env, you don't need to remember, this stop working. There you go you don't need to remember the, the port that you were using anymore, right? So PG Sandbox has a, an environment file that it will use to know the, the instance uh, connection, connection string, right? And then here is what I was mentioning before. This was running on my um, M1 uh, Apple uh, chipset, right? So select version will, will show us that. So, we can also use uh, the, the, any, any argument that we would use with PSQL. So this, as, as you remember, this is basically an intelligent alias. So PG Sandbox use is actually PSQL dash H dash P dash, dash U, whatever. And then everything you send after use will be sent straight to the PSQL command, right? So you can do anything you would with PSQL. And then another interesting uh, command here is the run command. And what this, what this will do is, in the binary um, directory that you used for the dash, in the dash B, in, in here you will have all the binaries that you would get with uh, the, the PostgreSQL um, instance, right? So you have PSQL, and the, the example here I'm, I'm using is uh, pgbench, but anything that is under that directory, you can use here in the, in the run subcommand, right? So with dash A, we are going to say append the connection string if it needs. In this case, pgbench would need a connection string. And uh, we are going to say, okay, run pgbench with these arguments. So it is very useful for you to have uh, load injected into your, um, into your running instance. Of course, you can also use like uh, pgdump or any other binary that is within that directory. To stop it and clean up, you can, if you can stop and start or, or restart uh, with, the, with the stop, restart, and start uh, subcommands. And if, when you don't need that instance anymore, you can use the destroy command. The only caveat here, and the tool tries to be um, smart with it, is it will prompt you to see if you really want to destroy. This is going to be using rm-rf in, uh, in, in the bottom, let's say. So be careful with it. 
you can comment that line if you want, but yeah, the, I've, I've been using it successfully. Um, I never had any issues so far, but yeah, I'm just mentioning it in case you don't like to see rm-rf in, in your code. Then how to list the instances that are running. Currently it's not possible, but uh, you can use the uh, ps command to grab it with postgres-d because um, we are always uh, using it for pointing it to the data directory. So this command will get you um, all the processes that are running at least, um, it can get you more, right? But at least it will contain all of them that were started by uh, PostgreSQL Sandbox. And then uh, uh, you can use, um, for, for checking the logs, you can use the dash dash uh, log or dash L var uh, variable to point it somewhere else if you don't want it by default in the data dir server.log. And then what I was mentioning about compiling, these are the steps that, um, that you would do if you wanted to manually compile. We are also compiling the contrib packages so we can have extensions like uh, PG stat statements. But again, you don't need to remember these or even do them manually anymore because PG Sandbox now supports uh, building your own or compiling your own uh, version. It's again very simple, you just need to use the build command and the version, right? And uh, as long as you can uh, get it for, uh, you have access to the, the, the sources via internet, you will be able to run this command. It will do this all in the uh, temp uh, directory. It's hard coded, but I'm, when I have time, I'm going to change it to be more, uh, friend, more user friendly. But yeah, after, after it's compiled, you can move these uh, to where, wherever you want and start using them uh, to start your own sandbox uh, instances. And then finally, the, yeah. So is there a reason for compiling from source instead of using packages? Yes, because this is just using, like, you, you wouldn't be able to have two or three dif different versions easily running, right? This is just using binary straight with PGCTL in the, in the, in the bottom. Yes, yeah. Because like customers can have very varied versions, right? So at the beginning, what I was using at least is all of these I was doing manually with PGCTL and initializing the data directory and they will all be, uh, I don't, I'm not showing it here, but they, they will all be in my PostgreSQL sandboxes directory. And this may be biased uh, because I, I was used to using MySQL sandbox, which is how it worked. Um, MySQL sandbox by default would have your uh, home uh, slash sandbox directory and all of them will be living there. So that's just uh, how, how we use it. But. Again, it's not needed, and you can do it in any in any directory you want. The PG what? Oh, yeah. As as long as it's. Yeah, it is, it is, and yeah, you can. If, uh, I'm not sure now if, if that is living under the bin directory, but if it is, we can, we can check now. I, 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 have a, I have one running here. But if it is, you would be able to do PG sandbox uh, dash A run, uh, PG is ready. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I can, I can. Okay, okay, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally Docker, we do have some time left, right? Yeah. Um, Docker, again, I'm not going to uh, delve too much into this, but you can also use Docker. 
if you wanted. And the, the, the structure of the command would be docker run. You need to have a unique name for your containers. And uh, you can use the dash E to set environment variables. Which environment variables are going to be supported will depend on the image you are using. In this case, we are using the Docker Postgres images, and they uh, support the Postgres password environment variable to manually set the password. And then the Docker run command will, uh, will know if you have the Postgres 14 um, image currently downloaded, and if you, uh, if you don't have it, it will do a download for you. So this is the pool here. And then it will use it to, uh, to create the container. This is just done if you don't have the image. If you already have it, you will just go and straight, uh, straight up yeah, start the container. And then, again, as, as we use uh, any other Docker container, we can execute uh, commands. In, the in this case, we want it to have a terminal and to be interactive, so uh, standard uh, out and standard error is redirected both in and out from the container. And then uh, you can connect uh, to a terminal as we did with LXC. This would be analogous to uh, any dbvar SSH command. It will get you to the terminal running, uh, to a terminal running inside the container, and then you can use just PSQL to uh, log into it. Uh, I'm going up or down? There you go. Uh, so after you're done, you can use uh, Docker RM dash VF to force and not ask um, if it was running, and to also remove any volumes that uh, were being used. Or you can also uh, use uh, stop and start as, as you would uh, normally, and um, after you stop it, you can do the RM without the, the, the forcing flag. To check, and this is how uh, Docker works, to check the logs, Docker will redirect uh, the output from the main process that it's running to the, um, to the Docker logs outputs, right? So if you do Docker logs and the container name, you will get access to the um, PostgreSQL log, let's say. And then to check which instances are running, you can do, use Docker PS or Docker PS A to also include the instances that are stopped. So created but not running. And then, whoops, whoops. This is going crazy. And then, yeah, just uh, the, the boilerplate uh, <laughs> uh, slides that uh, I need to add. So, if you are interested in joining us, I would be very, very glad to hear, hear about it and uh, just go to the booth and continue. Uh, we can continue discussing this. And we also have the PMM running, which this is uh, super awesome. I, I think, in my personal opinion, this is not just because I'm in the, in the support team from Percona, but uh, just go and check it out because uh, at, at least there is uh, nothing similar that I know of, uh, which is open source, free, and free for you to use. And then I'm not sure if you have uh, any other questions. Yes? If it works on, on ARM? Well, but it needs... Uh, uh? Yes, but it needs... Uh, it needs LXC, so that's, that's the, because like, the, there is no point in running, uh, uh, of, in running it in virtual machine mode because it will be running, in, inside it will be running all of it in, a, in an Intel architecture. So um, that's a very good question, but I, I, I don't think, uh, I've, at least I've never seen, I've seen it used. That's, that's the only limitation. If you can run LXC in ARM, you, can, you could, but that, I'm not aware of it uh, being possible. No, no, uh, it's going to about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it, it will get there. At some point, you, you will be able, but so far, I think no. Any other questions?
Ok? Muito obrigado. <risos>